Will you have to wear a face mask on the outer decks of a cruise ship? Taking a midnight stroll, laying by the pool. Well, a new order from the CDC sheds some light on that question, and it takes effect tomorrow. L let's talk about it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Cruise News Show. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news update. Well, a big story today, a story about masks, a story about the CDC, a story about the effects of masks on a cruise ship. It's all the same story. But before we get to that, I would like to talk to you a little bit about YouTube and why I ask you to subscribe. Some people, they get annoyed with it. Like, why are you always telling me to subscribe? Everybody knows to subscribe. Well, first, I would reject that assumption. Uh, when I first came to YouTube, I didn't really know what the process was. And so it's important to help people that are new to the platform understand how you can stay connected with creators that you appreciate, creators you want to hear from. And then part two of that is YouTube recommends that you ask people to subscribe, to like, and to comment. They're the ones with the data and when they crunch the data creators who actively ask people to engage with their channel to be a part of their community end up growing faster than channels that do not oh so you want to get more views so you want to grow absolutely let me answer that question too people seem to have it twisted if i'm going to do something i want to do it the best that i can i believe in the value of my content i believe in the value of my message many people out there many of you have connected to it and said to me personally we find value in what you do so why would i not want as many people as possible to see that if i'm going to be a creator why would i not leverage every good practice to get more people to see my content. Is it also financially better if I get more views? Absolutely, I'm very fortunate in the fact that now I get to do things, I get to inform, I get to educate, I get to inspire, and I get a paycheck for it. I'm not mad at anybody out there for the job that they do, and I would surely hope that people aren't mad at me for trying to do my job well. So with that said, if you want to stay up to date with what's going on in that cruise life, if you want to be connected to this virtual community, let me invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of the shows. Thank you in advance. Let's get to the news. On the 29th of January, the CDC issued a new masking order dealing specifically with transportation, and it is an order that takes effect on the 1st of February. I've read the order a couple times. It's got some jargon. It's got some legalese in it. Uh, let me do my best to give a summary of what it says. This order targets specifically forms of travel where, where people do it in mass. So this order applies to traveling on a bus. This order applies to flying on an airplane. This order applies to taking a train. This order applies to going on a cruise. And so that, that's why it's significant. So basically what the order says is if you're using any one of these forms of mass transportation, that you have to wear a mask at all time. This order is putting the enforcement of this policy somewhat directly on the operator with consequences if they don't do certain things. First of all, the operator of the transportation has to ensure that people boarding whatever form of transportation it is are wearing a mask. They're in charge of monitoring the people during their travel time, during the duration of their transportation. They have to monitor people and make sure that they're wearing a mask. If they notice people that aren't wearing a mask, they have to call them out on it. And then if people can continue to violate the rule, they have to have a plan for getting the person off the transportation at the first possible instance, the first possible stop. So if you jump on the Greyhound bus and you're going to take a trip from New York City down to Miami, Florida via Greyhound, that would probably be a long trip, but you got to show up the Greyhound bus terminal with a mask on. You have to board the bus with the mask on and you have to wear the mask the entire time unless you are eating or drinking. 
and the person operating the bus, they have to be paying attention. And if they notice you don't have a mask on, then they have to call you out. They have to inform you that it is now a federal law to wear a mask while you're on the bus from New York down to Florida. And if you still say you're not gonna do it, well, the very next bus stop that that bus stops at, they're kicking you off. But Greyhound, that's a US business doing business state to state. Uh, are these rules really going to apply to the cruise business? Because the cruise business, they're not U.S. businesses, and they're, they're not always in U.S. territory. I mean, once you get people on the cruise ship and then you get out into international waters, uh, most of the time the rules of the land don't matter once you get uh, into international waters. How could the CDC enforce this? Yeah, they got that covered too. There is a phrase, controlled free practique. How a fancy term, right? Controlled free practique. And essentially what that means in the context of cruising is, hey, cruise business, if you don't follow our rules, we're not going to allow you to come to our seaports and take on passengers or come to our seaports and let off passengers. So the CDC and the government, they found a way to have leverage over the cruise business. So let's think of it like this. Uh, you jump on a cruise down in Miami, you're following all the protocols, you got the mask on, the people in the terminal are making sure you got the mask on, you're still there at the port of Miami, you're on the cruise ship, the cruise line's making sure you got your mask on, you got your mask on even outside walking around. And then when you hit international waters, you think, well, who's gonna be the boss of me now? You take the mask off. And if the cruise line does not enforce these rules that you have to wear a mask, uh, even outside, if they do not enforce these rules, and I don't know if the CDC finds out about it, you know, snitches get stitches. I don't know if they're going to have people on these cruise ships checking this out. You know, it's going to get out. We saw it with the super yacht that went out of Barbados, like two days in, somebody was going, hey, they're not wearing masks. So it will get out. That gets back to the CDC. Then the CDC may pull that business and say, look, you can't do it anymore. Hey, Carnival, you're not enforcing the rules that we put in place. You can't cruise anymore. So they do have some levers they can pull. They do have some stroke where they could affect the operating of the cruise business, even though the cruise businesses are not U.S. entities. I guess that's the long way of saying th there's no getting around these rules. So what does it mean practically on the cruise ship? We've been talking about it before under the healthy sail panel that was developed by Royal Caribbean by Norwegian Cruise Line. The masking policy was always uh, wear a mask where social distancing is not possible. Uh, if you're on the top deck and you're six feet away from somebody else, then you don't have to wear a mask. If you're poolside and you're six feet away from somebody else, you don't have to wear a mask. This rule is different. If you're on a plane that leaves Europe, if you're on a train that crosses the Canadian US border. If you're on a cruise ship that comes from the Bahamas back to the United States, you got to wear a mask the whole time. Inside, outside, the only exceptions are when you're eating, drinking, taking medication. If you're speaking to somebody who reads lips and it's hindering the communication, you can take your mask off. If you're unconscious, you're not expected to have a mask on. If you're on an airplane and the oxygen drops down because of cabin depressurization, you can take the mask off. You can do the oxygen. If you're going through a security checkpoint that requires them to verify your identity by looking at your face, you can take the mask off. Also exempt are children younger than two years old. And then any person with a disability that prevents them from wearing a mask or safely wearing a mask according to the definition for disability laid forth by the Americans with Disabilities Act. It makes no distinction in the order of whether the travel is indoor or outdoor. It really just deals with this idea of conveyance, that you're being moved from one place to another on a form of transportation. It'll be interesting to see if the cruise lines push for an exemption for being outside or being socially distanced. But if you think about the way the theme parks are doing it, they're requiring about like Disney World is requiring a mask, uh, even just walking around outside and so it could be a scenario where you're laying by the pool with a mask on now certainly you won't have to wear a mask in the pool that's going to constitute uh, some place where it would be dangerous to wear a mask and I'm even thinking about the vloggers that I saw in Las Vegas they had to wear a mask by the pool unless they were in the pool but you may say look cruising is not even happening right now so surely this is not going to be the way it is when cruising resumes well here's the interesting reality of this order guess when it expires it expires when they say it expires. This is an order that came out without an end date. Uh, this is uh, in effect until 
they decide it's not in effect. Kind of an open-ended order from the CDC. It does help people that are trying to enforce their masking policy. It gives a little more teeth and it will be interesting to see how it plays out. It will be interesting to see if, if anybody's checking up on this and if there really is any ramifications for not following this policy. Certainly, you know, they'll be looking at the cruise industry. Now, look, me personally, I'm not opposed to the masking. I do believe that masking, when everybody does it, it's a it's an everything or nobody thing. And right now we haven't had an everybody thing. I believe when everybody does it, uh, it will reduce the spread of this virus. And uh, to me, this seems like a lever that they're pulling to get more people to do it. I, I don't really think it's going to work. I think the people that aren't doing it still aren't going to do it. And so uh, something else is going to have to be the solution. But uh, you do see the leadership, at least in this CDC and this administration, uh, trying to leverage masking to stop the spread. And uh, who knows? Uh, again, I don't think you'll get much more compliance than you got previously. And so therefore, if you don't get the compliance and if everybody doesn't do it, then you probably could say that it's ineffective. But I, I do think you will see the experiment fully tested on a cruise ship because if it is a condition for that business to open back up, if it is a condition for cruising to keep going, the cruise lines will make sure that all their passengers are masked where they're supposed to mask. And, and maybe from cruising, we'll see whether or not that works, whether masking is a success or a failure. It's coming to a cruise near you, depending when cruises start. The question for the comments is this, do you think cruise companies that are picking up American passengers, do you think they will throw people off the cruise ship for not wearing a mask? What if it's half the cruise ship? What if it's a hundred people? Do you think to set an example, they would throw a hundred people off at the first stop if they refuse to wear a mask? That would be interesting to watch play out. Leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching the show today. Please share your support by hitting the like button. This is Tony with La Lita Loca. And until the next time, We'll see you on the Lido. Bye.